represents, let's say, a diamond, a heart, or a spade, all right? So we'll explain that then the diamonds go there, the spades go there, the clubs go there, and then either we're going to switch groups or we're going to switch magicians. So in the course of the night, they show some different yeah, well, because I, I think it's a little bit cooler in the rooms. Uh, if the weather's good outside, then it's good inside. It's like, oh. Do you think that there will be an October one? Yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pete and I are probably going to because if you're happy, Mike, I'm not going to be here. That, that's our like our big old Halloween show. So even though it's at the beginning, the latest episodes are on Twitter. Every single show there is from last Saturday or from last Wednesday. Every single show. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh okay. You should go down to the park. No, we had to talk about this last Saturday. I haven't cared. The Saturday. All right. Look good. at the color. There's some people. So. I don't always drink Coke Zero, so I know what it's supposed to be. I don't know. I'm going to go to him first, but if I do, I'll show next year. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's cool. So, I forgot to bring it back I was here for the time. I showed a little bit of my patience. You go to school. It's too much work for you. You're in school. 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 you are in school 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 you are in
or sponsors or employees. No, that page was in the way, right? I heard you're going to be fine. 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 you are going to be fine 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 you are Okay, we are live here at the Wise Guy Show. I am a fill-in host for filling in for Frank the Fireman. He's waiting for us. For me. Hey, what's up, everybody? <laughs> as hyper as I am, I am not going to scream into the mic like that. I promise everybody. We got here Jerry the Plumber, What's the Chicken on? Man from Alcatraz, and we got one heck of a good show tonight. We have a draw special. We forgot about our magician. We forgot about our magician. Our magician. Oh, yes, magician. Right. My second oh, oh, yes our magician. Adam know. Lucas, our magician. Adam Lucas. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> He's a magician. Goodbye. Hey, Adam Lucas. Yeah, right. Adam right. Lucas is in the studio. How does with this us? guy come in a month? And already he's hosting a show. I'm get, confused. We got to get on the show. Dudes. I'll be hosting well, you're, a show. You're a wrestling fan, right? You're what, a wrestling fan, that right? Got nothing to do with Because I'm, I'm like Triple H. I'm that damn good. That's why I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> you bumped your head somewhere? <laughs> Have you lost your mind? He's a legend. Die. He's a legend. Hey, Adam, can you do me a favor? Can you make him disappear to Borneo or something like that? Right. He doesn't know anything about magic. It's him. Right. Whichever one of you does magic. Make him disappear, please. Please. Adam does magic, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was surprised that he does that you know each other. Of course. We, we met through a whole other source. So last the week, source. Yes, last week we talked about magic on main list. I don't like this First guy. Friday, Paris Theater, every month, next one, July 7th. Yeah. And uh, we always have a featured so spot for a young and up and coming magician. So like two months yep. ago, Adam. Can, can, I, store, store, can store. I interject, but by the way, very interesting. Can I interject? <laughs> I can interject. He's going to be a ball Next ball week, ball. I have complete command of the school. I have complete command of, <laughs> of Belmont yeah, Avenue, we'll for that matter. We'll get wait, you a crown. We'll get, we'll get him a crown. I, I, can't, I can't deal with this next week. Don't see this this I, can't deal, crown. I can't deal with this I'm next I'm going to bring so many animals to this studio. You know, you're not going to know where, where to jump to. You know, no, I'm hold on. Tone it down a bit. Tone it down just a little bit. Tone it down a little bit. the front door. I'm not, I'm not putting up with him. And an animal rights activist in, this, in the room. I, I'm bringing the ducks, the chicken, the goats, the horses. I'm bringing everything. You're bringing your whole family. Your family. My whole family. Your whole family's coming in here. Uh -huh. Lord help me, please. <laughs> well, well, listen, i got to mention uh, a couple things. Obviously, Mike Healy, our official magician. Yeah. Uh, I came back. Every week, this is your show now. You come anytime you want. You don't got to be invited. Okay. You know that, right? Okay. okay. You're on the payroll. You. All right. You're on the payroll. Yeah, okay. You're on the payroll. Else. You got to pay your own taxes. Yeah, but if you do want a magician for your event, go to Mike, <laughs> MikeHealyMagic.com. Call him or call him at 973 <laughs> 477 2156. Does he get paid monthly yeah. too? He gets paid uh, whatever. Monthly. You got to work it out with him. But, uh, I'll, give you four, I'll, give you I'll give you 40 grand. Just make him disappear. Please. 40 grand. I'll disappear for you, buddy. Throwing bottles hey, at me. Listen, listen. NBA Big Apple. We went, uh, you couldn't go. Oh, it's not NBA. NWA. That's what I said. NBA. You said NBA. NWA. NBA. So why couldn't I go? So he came into the business. He waved Andrew Anderson I, uh, uh, and uh, Sal and uh, Ray. I spoke to Cavatro. Is he I hope they are watching because Sal, Sal got told by Humongous. Excellent. Oh, really? 
truck flipped over. Who did? Yeah. Sam. Just Sam. recently, like today? After the show. Oh I spoke to Camacho shortly. Oh, you mean after the right wrestling after show? Right after the wrestling show, around 11, 30, 12 o'clock. Wow. Flipped the truck around. Oh, man. Is he all right? I don't all right? know. No. I call well, I've seen some Facebook posts by them, so I think I, they're okay. I, I don't. I think so, I'm assuming. But uh, I do know Sal. I hope he's okay. I hope that videos are true. And you're on the boat fishing. Uh, I know. How in heat again? Yes. So I heard the show went good. Did you hear that? I heard they had like 450, 500 people. 450, yeah, 500 people. Yeah, it was nice. It was a nice event. And uh, they just announced Saturday, September 23rd, uh, live from Sports Domain Academy, uh, 105 U.S. Route 46, Clifton, New Jersey. NWA Big Apple having another event, so that's how cool. they're going. Who's on the card for that? Uh, they know. just signed three matches, but the, I didn't get the names. It takes, but, time. Uh, it takes at least three weeks to sign all the matches. Who do you think's going to be Are you going to be on the card? No, I'm Maybe not. the yeah. chicken man will be If on you're the a wrestling fan, on. they had, uh, at, at <laughs> way, in Wayne, they had the Nasty Boys, uh -huh. and they had uh, Kevin Sullivan. Well, how did that go? How did that go? It was great. We were just talking about it. Well, how, I it so. went over well. Dude, well. How did you take Where in the whole find this? I, I need to know. I can't. In the show tonight. Are you fasting still today? No. Yeah, you're fasting. 30 days up, buddy. Right. Yeah, I'm not really. I love you. Are you on the Scarsdale diet? No, I'm not on the Scarsdale diet. Hey, Jerry, tell us about, wait, tell us about this graduation you're going to next week that you can't make it in the my studio. Daughter, you're leaving me to deal with him. Yeah, I know. My hey, daughter's graduating high school. Nothing? Nothing high, right? Yeah. Nothing later, huh? No. Well, they're not like Raiders, but she's not a Raider. Oh, uh, she's a lady. Yeah. So, uh, where's she going to college? I don't know. Maybe Bergen. I Bergen think you're asking you ask him personal questions here. No, it's all good. Can all we good. please put a muzzle on him? <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> Listen, though, but there, we did see uh, St. Anthony's, uh, the, the chicken man at St. Anthony's in Hawthorne. Nice, uh, it was a no. nice feast, let me tell you. Yeah. One of the nicest St. Anthony's feasts I've been I, Actually, last Friday, I checked out the one in Roselle Park. We're, we're not, not talking about Roselle, Roselle Park. We're talking about No St. comparison. Yes. No comparison. Right. Hawthorne blew it away. Blew I, it away. I, I, you know, tripled I wouldn't tripled doubt it. it. I, I, let me tell you something. $6 for six acres, just think the price you should be they should be put. And I was getting the money. No, but good. it wasn't like that over at Hawthorne. I think it's six acres. It's only charity for the really uh, the great prices at Hawthorne. Great feast. I'll, I'll go to it again next year. Belva had their St. Anthony's also. That was good. Um, but, none, of, uh, none of them compare to St. Gerard in October. No, St. Gerard. Well, that's a awesome. different saint and that's a different feast. So, I know it's I mean, a different saint. I'm just talking about feasts, okay? Can you let me tell you something? Let's run in San Gennaro. Let's run in San Gennaro. St. Anthony's in Hawthorne, I gotta say, was one of the nicest feasts I've seen. The guy did it, he's doing it for 37 years. Yeah, right. Nice. I jumped out of jail. Also, we had the death of uh, Adam West. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I chased him. Batman. Oh, wait a second, wait a yeah. second, guys. Hang on, hang on. I'll show you this nice I just oh, wait, you put it up. Oh, you put it up. Why are you on my page? Up. You stalking me? No, I put it up and I deleted it. I saw it. it. I put it up and I deleted it. Why was just on my Facebook page? Because when you share stuff, when you share stuff, it yeah. has to be public, not just your friends can see. Okay. You had it for just your friends to no, see. Not my Twenty-six thousand members on our page cannot see it. Wait. No, Unless I, they were friends with I you. Made, no, I made that public. That no, it was not. It the, was, what would, the what would Adam West and uh, this, oh, that, then that was yeah. 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 that was. You're definitely you're just miserable. You're great. You're miserable. Yeah, you're miserable. I'm not miserable. miserable. I, got, I got a Neanderthal sitting next to me for another Friday, driving me crazy, trying to trying to get me all hyper. It's not gonna work. Come I'm on. Kidding. Come on. Yeah, that's the perfect face for Robert. Yeah, he's yeah, I think he's fast. But, hey, listen. I, before the show started, <laughs> before the show started, I'm gonna let you hear it. Uh, this is. I think this will work out good. I think, no. I, I think if you hear it on the phone, I'm telling you. Is it no, no, this is going. This is, this is going. When I promise you, we're going to play a message that I just got. I want you to hear it.
right, right. That was the Reverend Bob Levy letting right, right. you know that he will be on Levy Live every Tuesday night on DDV Radio. Just letting you know, and he wanted me to promote his, his event, uh, his comedy show at the Dublin, Dubliner uh, Saturday, this Saturday, June 17th at 8 p.m., 96 River Street in Hoboken, New Jersey. Tickets go For tickets, go to MeadowlandsComedyClub.com. I'm telling you. Check out the wise guys. Some of the wise guys are going to be there. Whoever can make it is going. Um, we're going to try to be there to support our buddy, the Reverend Bob Levy, former uh, Howard Stern guy. He was the one who slapped Danny Bonaducci in the mouth. And uh, the, the, he's done so much more stuff. The Reverend Bob Levy, don't forget, this Saturday night at the Dubliner, Saturday, June 17th, 96 River Street in Hoboken, New Jersey. The we, Reverend. We don't have to fight you. Yeah, I guess he's, he's, just go there. he's a good guy. So he's yes. good for a free group. And he's funny. Oh, too. by the way, there's an open roof at the top. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm going to throw you off there. But, um, but uh, really, a couple things happened, just so you know. Anybody paying attention to the news? What happened? The happened? shooter uh, yeah, that's uh, that shot in Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, you know, we want to do, we want to give our condolences yeah. to all the family members who were uh, devastated. Well, you know, nobody died, thank God. But uh, some people got shot. Uh, it was a. Uh, political thing, and uh, I think after this, uh, maybe the Democrats and the Republicans can at least try to smooth some stuff out. It's never going to be that easy to just be even with each other. So boil it down to the gun control laws. And, 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 it's, and it's sad, but um, House Majority Leader, uh, we want to, you know, uh, wish him the best, uh, to have a speedy recovery. He had surgery today, Steve, uh, Steve uh, House Majority Leader Steve Scalise. Um, and uh, thank God for the uh, uh, Alexander Police Department who helped out, but mainly, mainly was the, um, the, uh, Capitol, the, the Capitol Police. That's what, that's what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, and uh, let me tell you, it's, it's crazy nowadays. These people don't understand that, you know, especially the media. I, I don't, I don't, I, I believe in the media, but I believe the media needs to tell the truth more or work on, on, on honest true stories to give to the public so they don't see when, when you're this crazy person who's believing something that you're not too sure of you get mad and, and, and if the media is manipulating it just to get a news story i think that stuff's got to stop you know i mean i heard something today that was just that's because of our business they, they said that they, i heard on the radio they're going to try to prove that that connecticut shooting was a fake no that's the guy that made him kill me yeah um, i mean are these people for real I, 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 I'm just saying, I, I watch all the news. I watch Channel 2, I watch, if you watch Channel 2 and, and Channel 5, it's like two different news. I mean, and, and it shouldn't be that way. It should be close. It should be close. I mean, you want to manipulate a little bit to your political agenda. If that's the way the media works, fine. But try to keep the stories a little close. I mean, you got one end saying that Trump's going to jail, and the other end saying that was the best day for Trump. There's not even a comparison. You know, and it's got to stop. And it's not about Trump. It's not about nuts. It's about telling the public the truth. That's all I want. I want to know the truth. I want Trump someplace. Right? They really got to knock it off. They got to knock it off. But, yeah, but, but there was also, did you see last night, though, the, the 24 story uh, Grenfell um, Tower? Is that yeah. crazy? Mm -hmm. Oh my God! What the hell Watch the news. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's like, I don't why. It was a 24 uh, story building that was built in 1974. Apartment building, in and it started it by the roof. I right. said, and the fire it just worked its way down. And just the whole 24 floors. Oh Every God. floor. Yeah. Was just I didn't that have anything like that. That might have been electrical yeah. going down, baby. Yeah, the, the, well, in, in oh. Europe, in England, in that areas, I always looked at the buildings being built by concrete. So when I saw that, I'm like, how's that possible? The only thing I can think of is maybe the roof was concrete, the building was concrete, but in each floor the, roof, the, the ceilings were made of wood. And wood. then they were yeah. worried about the building collapsing after so the fire. The heat, yeah. 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 separation of concrete. Yeah. And it's, it's still six dead, or was it? No, up, it's it up, up to twelve dead, dead, seventy injured. Okay. It's under investigation. Started at twelve fifty-four a.m. their time, um, and it, was, uh, it, had, it holds four hundred people. Uh, people were jumping out of the floors. They were. They were throwing their kids out the windows. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's, okay. it's almost as bad as a 9-11. No, nothing like that. Oh, no, just as bad. It's it's not even wasn't, it wasn't even close. What, what are you talking right? about? Like 70 that. people, uh, 12 people died. 9-11 right. a lot. Well, I'm just it's thousands. Not. Still a tra tragedy's a tragedy. Yeah. Right, right. I know, I know. I know. No, it was, it was ugly, though. No, it was no. a very ugly, ugly Stop. tragedy. Yeah. 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 See, we don't want to send our condolences out to them also. And next week, I don't know how this is going to work out next week. What do you think, Jerry? Oh, right. Right. We, we, we gotta build a wall. Maybe Mike. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, I did not get hit. Like, come, in with, come in with a baseball bat. I'll come in with my own wall. All right. No, I'm sure we can get a wall. Excuse me. The most important thing is one of you have to bring an iPad and do Facebook Live or YouTube Live for next week. Use your phone. Use your phone. Yeah, we'll Make sure you guys do it. Why can't we just... Because I will just, not like, be here. I will be in New York well, City. Well, Facebook fans. Put that on low. I don't wait. You can, I, we'll, 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 we'll figure something out. We'll, we'll discuss it at 10. Yes, we'll figure it out. <laughs> if they go no, I, uh, no Facebook Live, remember, we'll be in New York at uh, the lovely Karen King's event at the Cutting Room. Should be singing. Um, we are going there. Um, hopefully, we can uh, get the Wise Guys show on the, on the map and uh, hopefully uh, support Karen King with everything that she's doing. She had a beautiful voice. Kara King, who most of you don't know, is the late wife, uh, I mean, the wife of late great Cha Cha, John Cha Cha Garcia, was the unofficial mayor of Little Italy in New York City, uh, like a mentor to me and a good friend of mine, and I miss him dearly. But uh, going to see Kara King, his wife, uh, with the net, uh, the uh, talent coordinator, otherwise, guys, show at the cutting room next week on Wednesday. I love that. And we're doing a live Facebook from there, so we'll, we'll save you uh, on some time. The live YouTube, we're just going to have to pass on that. On that. I'm, I'm sure not. But, uh, yeah, yeah, we can't work over there. Perfect. That's it. But, you know, something after that 21st show, the 28th, we got a big show. Camera. We did say last week. Yeah, Who's on the 28th, right? The 28th is... Oh, yeah, Adam Miles, right? Animal House, our Animal House special. That's going to be We good. got Nita Meyer, Nita Meyer, Mark Metcalf. And then we have the, the girl who played Babs. Remember her? Remember Babs? Yes. Nothing but a pig, IG pig, and that's Babs. And Bab oh, I remember that. Babs yeah. was um, the one on the end who had her dress ripped off with John Belushi grabbed and threw in the car with him. But there's also one more special guest, uh, a photographer just Matt Scale, DJ uh, Detective Wojohowicz, and oh. our official wise guy wrestler. Yes, D DC Cab. Who's DC? Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? Oh, DC, Our official photographer has yes. walked in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm uh, hosting here. Uh, he was on Barney Miller, Max. I know. You have to beat his shirt. shirt. Beat his shirt. Do your no, right. No, you're oh, right. No, you're right. Let's do the dumbest. How are you making out with the Saturday Night Fever? How do we make out with the Saturday Night Fever now? As soon as somebody shuts up, I'll tell you. Okay. Um, <laughs> did, um, can I have my water over there? Oh, get the water. I'm not, I, that's why I put it. I thought he was always going to And he stops talking. Speak. Hello. Uh, you know what? I think the best thing for me to do is just ignore him. Yes, he's talking. Pretend he's, he's not here. Pretend he's not here. I think the show will go very smoothly. Smooth. It'll go smooth. 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 So what, what is it? The A&D photographer, Anthony Scala, made it to the show tonight. Oh, Fire. You want to mention his royal blue yes. photo booth? The big royal blue photo booth. Photo Thank jobs, you. I'm telling you, he's the best. Right, and he brought you guys donuts. And he wants a host. You really? just he can't even say Royal Booth. Right. <laughs> and he wants a host. What do you say, Booth? Booth. I didn't, Royal. Say, I didn't say a word. Dude. Can you please tell well, us how you're you not mention it? Why did you not mention it? Please muzzle him. You have to muzzle him. All right, tell, tell us about the show that's going on this uh, tonight. What do we got in the studio? What do we got in the studio? Okay, we have a judge well, in the studio. We have a magician, Adam Lucas. He hasn't said a so word yet. He's, a, he's, a, he's just figuring this out now. Right. He's, he's, like, like, well, he's another um, magician, he's, right? He's, he's a weirdo for sure. Adam, yeah. just so you know, you're on YouTube yeah. live. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. yeah. probably thinking, what have I gotten bitch? myself into? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Definitely, right. definitely another weirdo in the building. You got your whole. Just so you know, we're not keeping you out of nothing. We're just having you join us. Your hour is between 8.30 and 9.30, so you got a full hour with us. We didn't even get started with you yet. Uh, how, how do you feel so far? Uh, so far, it feels great, yeah. All right. <laughs> Adam, weird, right? Come all right, that's all you got. Adam, <laughs> Adam, enough time for you, buddy. Adam, Adam, to do a show like this, it takes a very special individual. Yes. Have have I am special. Yeah, you have, have, have a social ones. security number. <laughs> Give one of your good ones. Right. The chicken man of Alcatraz, Jerry the plumber, I'm afraid of the fireman, that's Anton the source, and that's our official. I don't know where to know him. You want to introduce your dad in the back over there? Dad, what's up, Dad? What's up, Dad? How you feel back there? You good? FDNY, I like that. That's it. It looks like you just want to go home and go to sleep. Yeah, we could use some coffee. Right. Hello. Actually, no. Five minutes. You got five minutes. Chicken man doesn't need coffee. What do I need? You need to shut up. 
Shut the hell up. And you need to pay. Are you fasting? You look a little hungry. Yes. The show show will never be the same after next week. Uh, After next week. Never be the same. I'm afraid to even leave you alone. Yeah. I think, no, I think you'll be alright when you're alone. Yeah, it'll be alright. Right. 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 He's gonna be, be nervous. Best friends are gonna go to the right. bar. And hang out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna, I'm gonna rip all the chest hairs off his chest. I don't have any chest hairs. Let me see. see. Take off the shirt. Uh, okay. <laughs> Freddie, I yeah. can't. Freddie, I'm gonna flip. I'm gonna flip this guy. <laughs> our, our audio engineer's having a blast. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Uh, yeah, but you want to mention our guest, though, the Joe Special. Oh, yes, our Joe Special, our first guest was that. Carl, Carl, Carl Gottlieb. Carl Gottlieb, the screenwriter, also had an appearance in the movie. What are you doing? What, what was his appearance? I don't know, but he had a couple appearances. You told me to stop talking. Actually, he was like, don't you? You're right in front of me. I can't even, I can't even, I can't even read your hand right now. I'll talk right, about it. I'll talk about Carl. Carl Gottlieb was in a lot of stuff, though. I'll talk about Carl. He was the screenwriter for George. He was in the movie. He was the one who gave voice right to the problem about closing the beaches. You know, he is sitting on it. Slow down. Breathe. Breathe a little. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. On, yes, on, I do. On the, on the ferry. On the ferry with yes. the mayor. I got a good go one. I got a good go one. Yeah. Uh, it's a different sh- different movie, but were anybody here friends of the movie Caveman? Yes. Okay, well, Carl Gottlieb. Okay, listen to this. Carl Gottlieb co writed and directed the 1981 comedy film. So, you know, wow, that was movie, funny. The whole movie. But that was with Ringo Starr. Remember that? Yeah, that, was that, was one, that, was that was definitely got discussed. We're gonna, we're, now, we're going to try to stay off that. We're going to say more on Jaws because of it. 42 year anniversary. We have Susan Back- Backlund. She's the, the first victim. How do you say her name? Backlund. Backlund. She, she was the first victim. Yeah. She, 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 she was a stunt woman and everything. Yeah. She'll tell you the story on how oh, they made it look like she was being attacked by a shark. Yes. He never actually showed yeah. the shark. Yeah. And it was amazing that this woman became famous. She must have been maybe five, ten minutes of the movie tops. And she had the most and famous. 42 years yeah. later, we're still talking about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, just so you know, it was so crazy of a scene. It was done numerous times. Uh, Richard Dreyfus watching her do the performance over and over, told her afterwards that it, it, it absolutely terrified him just to watch her. That's how they Did she it. hurt her back? She said it hurt her back or something one time. Yeah. But was that an electronic thing? Yeah, yeah, do you remember? Time. I'm gonna bring you back now. You gotta think hard. Do you remember the movie 1941? Yeah. See, I don't talk about this because my phone don't ignore it. Come on now, shut that right. stuff off. Do you remember the movie 1941 we'll with John Belushi? No, I don't remember. He that. was the air pilot, and it was about a, a World War II movie. They were gonna attack Hollywood. I don't remember, remember that. that. I don't remember that. It was a great movie. But they're all, they're, all, they're all famous actors. The John Belushi. I mean, uh, I know, but I never saw it. Okay, that. well, in the scene, in the scene, the Japs. I remember PJ and the Bear. <laughs> Listen, the Japs invaded Hollywood by coming in through a bay with a submarine. And the periscope came up and got Susan back with, back and she clean. did the same scene with Jaws. It was a funny movie. It's a comedy. I didn't say it. It's a comedy, 1941, I'll tell you. She, she was in that? It was a Steven Spielberg movie. She so was in it? I would say it was, uh, it was one of his lower, you know, pop, um, uh, popular. Do you remember it? Yeah, right? yeah. Not the details, but I remember when. But if you remember when the Japs invaded, they came in with a sub, and when they first found out, the periscope came up and caught Susan back when they got her stuck on the periscope. <laughs> so she did the same scene again like she did in Jaws. Yeah. It was like a spoof. <laughs> but uh, that's what, that's. What year did 1941? You're definitely from that. 1941. No, what, the movie didn't come out in 1941. <laughs> no. The name of the movie was. I think 19. Uh, I honestly think it was 19. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, 78 or 77. Ooh, and I gotta be honest, what weighs more? Pound the feathers or pound the bricks? Yeah. Pound the feathers or pound the bricks? I'm gonna say 1977, 78 the most. Okay. okay. Because it, they, they read, the Jaws was 75. Yeah. Jaws 2 was 78. 78, right. But it's uh, supposed to be the source, I know. Let me tell you, Jaws is They actually had it in the movies about a year ago, Jaws. They had the 40th year anniversary. You know, me and my brother went to see I was see watching it. online, you could actually watch Jaws on a raft. On, on a boat, on, in, in, like in a bed, mm-hmm. in a big screen. He saw that. Just tell saw us, it. Adam. Oh. Adam, you got the floor. Tell yeah. us. Oh, uh, I, I've seen similar to that. Uh, it was actually at nighttime, like midnight, they had a screen in the water. I've seen this live in person and pictures of it. And they're in like dark black tubes, and their feet are dangling in the water, and they're just watching Jaws at oh. night. <laughs> and they're uh, in the, uh, on the beach, in the water. It's, it's fun watching it jaws on water. 
Well, we gotta go to break, but we're gonna be back. You gonna join us with the interview, with Carl? All right. This is, I'm gonna just take this out because you don't. You gonna remember all our networks? No, okay, can't. this is the Wise Guys Show on DDBRadio.com, DDB Radio on TuneIn, Armed Forces Radio Network, Village Connection Radio, City World Radio, Facebook Live, YouTube Live. This is the Wise Guys Show. We'll be back after these messages with Carl Gottlieb. Yeah. Also, treating headaches and tinnitus and vestibular issues. It's easy to set up an appointment. Visit www.bella pt.com or call 201 791 0008. That's 201 791 0008. Ask yourself to stop living in pain. Start the road to recovery. Call Bella Physical Therapy today. Try State Health and Wellness. If you're searching for a doctor who truly cares about your health and well-being, contact Dr. Alex at Tri State Health and Wellness. Dr. Alex specializes in treating law enforcement professionals and their families and features special hours to accommodate different work shifts. All necessary testing can be performed in their friendly and comfortable environment. Contact Tri State Health and Wellness. Located in Fairlow, New Jersey. Call 201-791-7771. That's 201-791-7771. Wing 4. If you are looking for a certified used or new vehicle, where you get no that down further, down visit Wing yeah. right. 4. It's not Jersey it's not bad. Bad. It's not bad. Bad. dealer. Featuring the largest inventory of New York vehicles right. in the tri state area, Wayne Ford has been proudly serving the community for over 50 years. Conveniently located one quarter mile from the Willowbrook Mall on Route 46 in Wayne, New Jersey, contact Wayne Ford today. Toll free 888 349 6857. That's 888 349 6857. Kale Orthopedic Center, featuring high-performance care for bodies in motion. Kale Orthopedic is proud to provide comprehensive orthopedic care for New Jersey's finest. Every day you put your body at risk, and Kale Orthopedic is here to help you. Contact Kale Orthopedic at 201-447-3880. That's 201-447-3880. Three eight eight zero. Kale Orthopedic. High performance care for bodies in motion. If you're tired of sleeping alone each night, contact Dr. Yeah, Doblin at Home Sleep Solutions. Dr. Doblin is New Jersey's law enforcement professional's preferred sleep apnea doctor. With the use of a custom fitted oral device, you can now look forward to a restful night's sleep. Contact Dr. Doblin. Featuring two convenient locations in Fairlawn and Trenton, New Jersey. Call 201-396-9338 or visit athomesleepsolutions.com. City Health Pharmacy, located at 23 Court Street in Newark, New Jersey. Come and experience why thousands of your neighbors choose City Health Pharmacy each and every month. City Health Pharmacy is a proud supporter of the men and women of New Jersey law enforcement, their families, and friends. Visit City Health Pharmacy today at 23 through Court Street in Newark, New Jersey, or call 862-772-0442. That's 862-772-0442. If you're looking for the widest variety of talk programs, entertaining, engaging, 30 seconds, the host isn't even here. Censored and opinionated. Visit DD. Well, the host of the show is going to be here in the 30 seconds. Listen up, you're smart. You're going to be able to make me go with my physical bullet. You gotta follow him. I'll stop here before the show next week and put everything out for you.
I thought you just blew one of my eardrums out. Oh, you, well, you have just one of them? You got another power back. Okay, we're back at DVDradio.com, The Wise Guy Show, and are we ready for Carl Gottlieb? He's on the phone right now. Carl, how are you? Welcome to The Wise Guy Show. Carl? There he is. There he is. Hello? Hello? Carl! Oh, this is Susan. Well, thanks for, thanks for giving me the right info, right? It's Susan Backlin, the first shark victim. How are you, Susan? I'm very good. I know you Okay, welcome to the Wise Guy Show. We got Freddie the Fireman, Jerry the Plumber. Pete the Chicken Man. I'm doing spectacular. We got a couple of magicians in the house here. We got Annette, our talent coordinator, who's probably responsible for getting you on. How you doing? Oh. Actually, Jerry. Jerry? You're Jerry the plumber. How you doing, Susan? I bet you had killer. Jerry the plumber. How you doing? Are you on the boat? Yes, I am. Where are you, Susan? Oh, well, right? Oh, wow. So are you calling us from the boat? Yeah. Oh, you live on the boat. Uh, I know. And the sharks. So, so Susan, um, you, you know, you weren't just an actress, you were a stunt woman. Um, what made you get into doing stunt woman? Well, actually, I got, I mean, the stunt work first. I got into acting more as I got into business. Susan, uh, 17 years ago, the 25th anniversary of Jaws came out on DVD, and I, you know, I liked all the extras on it, and in an interview, you told us what was involved in doing that opening shark attack scene, where we never actually saw the shark. Did they, like, have to tie parachutes to you and, and like, twirl you around the beach? Tell us how that went. No, they used, well, what they did was they put here. I mean, that had to have worn you out. Did you, did you get injured a little bit? I know you were worn out, but... No. You know, I didn't get hurt except in the emergency one. They pulled out the rest of the energy because of the no one was there. And somebody just now told me to do that machine. So the door is kind of changed. And special people need to get out of there because of something happened. 40... 42 years later, can you believe it? They're still talking about it. Did you, when you were shooting that scene, and you know when Jaws was released, did you think Jaws would be the phenomenon, the what it's become today, from one of the most popular horror films ever made? Nobody thought it was going to go. Probably they had, you know, they were I remember Richard Dreyfus talking in a couple of a couple of interviews. The shark is working. The shark is not working. You, there was a lot of you know, issues with that mechanical shark, wasn't there? Yes, there was. It was a big job. Uh, it was made out of all the When your, scene, when your scene was shot, was that, I mean, obviously they don't shoot scenes chronologically. Was was your scene one of the first scenes to be shot, or was it shot towards the middle of shooting? Do you remember exactly when that was?
okay, but you, you never actually had a, you, know, you never actually did have a scene with the mechanical shark. We just, you know, the, you know, the theory, you know, theory of, um, we had to pretend there was a shark attacking you. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, hey, Susan, when, when you were doing the the, the movie um, in 1941 and they told you you had to do that scene, did you say, oh, my God, not again? <laughs> oh, no, no, I was very, I felt very nice that they uh, put me to in part of me. Uh, yeah. well, they, you, you, Steven Spielberg must have just loved the way you did it, so he had a, he, he did, he did uh, direct both movies. So did you, were you friends with him? Yeah. Now, Susan, is it true that there was some discrepancy on how they were actually going to end Jaws? Was Roy Scheider going to shoot the shoot the oxygen tank in the shark's mouth? Was the, was the shark going to bite down on it and explode? So there was, there was a lot to be desired, I don't know how they were going to shoot the ending. I wasn't there when they shot that. They didn't keep that to the end. Susan, did you think it was going to be such a big hit movie when you were making it? Because Steven Spielberg was just, you know, like, he wasn't known as well as he is now at the time. Did you get, did you get a sense that it was going to be a big hit? No, I didn't. So you didn't even get to go to the premiere? No. Oh, that's too bad. I'm going, uh, I have friends listening to this radio show, Angela and Joe, and the Saturday before the beginning of summer, which is this coming Saturday, they have a big Jaws night in their backyard. Uh, once it gets dark, they blow up this big movie screen, and all the the whole neighborhood every year the whole neighborhood comes over and we watch Jaws about nine nine thirty at night when it gets dark, and it's an annual uh, tradition. So they're listening. They're listening now uh, because you're on. <laughs> but when you're in. Oh, that's cool. And we're watching the movie? Yes. Well, coincidentally, Joe and Angela have a pool, too. And so uh, maybe some of us will be in it this Saturday night. <laughs> well, what they're saying, Susan, what it looks sounds like to me is well, if you're ever in the area during that time, you're welcome to sure. join the party. Okay. Angela's a good coach. She makes like uh, shark cupcakes and everything's shark. You know, there's gummy <laughs> sharks and everything is shark. Yeah. We, we have to come up with an adult beverage uh, named after a shark. But anyway, it was nice talking to you, Susan. It was nice talking to you. Uh, but we're not done. We're not, we're not done. done. I'm just saying it, it was nice for me to talk to you. <laughs> No, well, He's done, you're not. Uh, I wanted to ask you, are you still doing work with animals? Uh, no, I pretty much uh, live in my boat. We take short boats, and we go out to dive. We have a couple of islands right off the river. We take our boats and go out to a week or two at a time. Are you big on fishing? I am the worst fisherman you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I can fish. Well, I figure you live off the boat, you catch a few fish, you grill it, throw it on the grill, and uh, have a nice night. Oh, yeah. If I could catch you. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, are you still in uh, contact with a lot of the uh, actors from Jaws uh, from in 1941? Am I what? Are you still in contact with a lot of your uh, co-actors and co-actresses from Jaws and in 1941? No, I don't really see anybody. I think the most around the 
I got to tell you, Richard Dreyfus was. <laughs> Richard Dreyfus is, you know, his comedy act in Jones alone made the movie worthwhile. <laughs> he did a little bit did, do you, do you, Is it true that he uh, said to you uh, while watching your performance that it absolutely terrified him? Does work. Um, are you sorry you got e eaten by the shark because you never got to be in any of the sequels because of that? That's right. I, I mean, did you audition for maybe another part, maybe in Jaws 2, something like that? Did you, did you even yeah. consider it? No, no, I was scared. Have you ever gotten back at a shark? Have you ever eaten shark? Uh -huh. I've eaten. Oh yeah, you have, huh? Does it taste good? a lot about Jaws because it's a Jaws special, but you did a little couple other things. You did a, you appeared in um in the Muppet the Great Muppet Caper. Is that Pardon? true? Were, were you in the Great Muppet Caper? Did. So you did. You, you were um, definitely. Uh, oh, you did some. You were a, a swimming instructor also, weren't you? Yes, I was. I did a little bit of everything. Yeah. Uh, Are supposed to ask a little question? Well, like, <laughs> well, well, we're all supposed to. Ask. We're all supposed to ask. You didn't. You, you got up and left her. No, but, but um, you, go? you you were you did some television. You did you did the Fall Guy. Did that have anything to do with you being a stunt woman and you just oh. wanted to maybe get in there involved with a little bit of the fault? I mean, that, that was a stunt uh, man, um, a stunt. So you're pretty tight with Lee Majors then. You're pretty tight with Lee Majors. So, Susan, what are you doing now? By the Just way, that's you, Mike the Magician. You know, hi, Susan. <laughs> that's not the chicken man. So, do you, do you act anymore? Okay. Do you have anything you want to promote? Anything, uh, to any uh, any charities or benefits that you do that you would like to, you know, let uh, anybody know about? Or appear appearances? Or no, 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 no. Are you going to do the chiller again? This is the chicken man. <laughs> Well, 
Are you going to come back to Chiller again? Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're going to hope to see you there when we when we do go. Because um, we go every Chiller. We try to make it out there, and uh, hopefully we see you again. Maybe we'll take you out for a bite to eat the wise guys. How's I'm going to bring the chickens and go. Bark, bark. <laughs> I know. Well, Susan, thank you so much for, for your time, and uh, uh, we wish you the best of luck, and enjoy yourself out in, uh, on the boat, and be safe, and uh, always know that you have family here in Jersey, and um, when we see you at Chiller, we, uh, we're we going to come up to you, and we're going to take you out to dinner. Oh, I know. All right. Yes. Susan back in. Thank you so much, Susan, for giving us your time. You too. God bless. Thanks, Susan. Okay. Bye. All right. Well, now that we uh, messed up um, on the time, um, do you want to call uh, Carl Gottlieb at at at, um, at nine, and then we'll give Andrew from nine till ten? Are you okay with that? <laughs> I'm, Thirty to ten. I mean, Adam. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't I keep thinking Wallace. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just call him now. Yeah. You want to? No, but we're we're gonna we. We're gonna do a break. break. Right. 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 No, we're not going on break right oh, now. We still got time. I cut her short because we were having a little technical problems. We pretty much got our, our questions out, you know what I'm saying? And it was very hard to hear her because she's on the boat, probably cell phone, in California. It's really difficult to listen. What am I doing in Hale, New Jersey? Uh, are you okay with that, Dad? Um, because um, we, we were supposed to call, um, is he good till 10 o'clock? All right. So you're gonna, your hour is going to be from 9 to 10 because they were so call, supposed to call Susan at 9.30. Instead, we're going to call Gottlieb at, at 9. Is that okay? I'm assuming he has to call. Yeah. Yeah. The technician, there was a problem with the, that's why the technician. So here's my six degrees of separation with JAWS. I retired um, as a vice, well, Jerry knows, as the vice principal of a high school that Roy Scheider graduated. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, Orange, was it Orange High School? No, uh, Columbia Maplewood. Maplewood. Not even close. He is from Orange. He's from Orange. Right? Yeah, yeah, but he he rest in peace. Oh, Columbia's got another, Frank Langella, the shoes, Andrew and yeah, Elizabeth Shoe, Lauren Hill, Did Zach you know Kraft. Her? Elizabeth Shue, were you there when she was there? No, but I was there a couple years ago when they filmed Gracie. That's right, wait, that's right. Yeah, right? I'm with, uh, Elizabeth Shue. Elizabeth Shue. And it was about. Who's the girl from Great Woman? Julia uh, Roberts. Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts. <laughs> Roberts. I wish. She's calling the next week. Julia Roberts. She's calling the next week. Was Julia Roberts in there? No. 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 She calls it next week. I'll be here. That's I'll be here. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, I think Elizabeth Elizabeth Chu was the Yeah, but there was another one too. Because but, it, but it was based on her real life experiences when she went to Columbia oh, trying right, trying so to be a female right. on the boys' soccer team before they had women's right. rights. <laughs> before they had women's rights. Always had women's rights. Well, we didn't want to bring up. We weren't sure. Um, but there was a little research I didn't. I did do heavy duty. Uh, um, Susan, um, I, I tried to give it to Jerry. You don't want to jump on it. Um, no, the Lady it. and the Lion, she appeared in the 1973 issue of Penthouse. Yeah, I'm going to ask oh, her that. Why not? You ask people kind of crazy questions. <laughs> well, it's, I don't want to ask it's her It's on her biography on her IMDb. She wouldn't have put it on here if she didn't say it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, it wasn't like I researched anything crazy. I mean, No, know, I know. You know, she was uh, an actress at the time, and, uh, you know, she, she was one of the, probably the top people to use for a movie like that. I'll tell you what, Jaws, every time after that movie came out, no matter when I went in the ocean, I was always looking down at my feet. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> no, I swear to God. How about, how about the part when Richard Dreyfus goes under goes under the gauntlet for the shark? He goes underneath the boat and pulls the guy out with no eye in the movie theater to get the milk done. I mean, <laughs> how about, do you remember when Roy Scheider had the shark in a headlock and just punching him in the face? No, I don't remember. I Me mean, neither. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um,. Uh, that was a good movie, though. That was on Police Academy. Remember when the shark came up and he had the gun? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but um, Jaws was such a good movie that, that when Jaws great. 2 came out, uh, Spielberg didn't take the movie. Um, but Rock Scheider did. And it was a discrepancy. And he, and he did want to do it. Michael one. Caine was in that, right? But no. No, that but, was the Revenge 4. That was 4. No, he was the one of the Jaws. Who is the guy that played three? Quentin? 4, 5, what? 6. The, the, the Jaws 3. Robert Shaw. He died right after that movie. Yeah, he, 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 he had a classic role. He was a classic. He had a classic role in The Sting with Robert Redford yeah. and Paul Newman. He was a classic actor. Well, oh, yeah. Let me tell you something. The, the, the movie itself, 1 and 2, was great. They actually tried to carry it on uh, for part three. 
if it was horrible. horrible. Yeah, but it was horrible, but they still yeah. had it in the connection with one and two. Yeah, they, they don't realize that it was 3D. It was the sons of yeah, those the sons. Well, were still, they were all in connection with each yeah. other. But then they came out with a four. The four was, was better than three. Four was better than three, but the shark followed the family to the Bahamas. Yeah, I didn't like that. That was <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that was yeah. stupid. That was stupid. Yeah, actually, that's so really, it was good until that point. point. Everybody says, you know, there's nothing like the original George. It's the truth. Well, two was good, too. Two was good, but I'll, I'll go on record right Get out now. of the water! Get out of the water! <laughs> Everybody, out of the water! Just, they still look blue no, I'll, I'll be honest with you. A lot, a lot of people are going to criticize me for this. I go on the record and say, the way Roy Scheider killed the shark in Jaws 2 was better than Jaws 2. No way. No yes. way. No, no, he, way. He, no. he threw that. He challenged, no like, way. he challenged that shark. He said, come here, you big... No, I'm he what he did, challenged like, that like shark. Jaws 2 at the end? Uh, he Vaguely. Could, I, uh, no way. No way. Two, the killing of the uh, shark, the no movie. Way. One was better, but the killing of the Let shark so. two was better. The Wise Guy show is the only show to have a Jaws 2 special and a Jaws special. How's that? That's true. Yeah. What do you think one of the best kills was on the shark? Who do you, the best? The best kill? The shark kill, yeah. The, the, the shark, oh, that's the Jaws kill. The shark ate the hook. No. Quint was the best one. Well, remember when they yeah, got Quint, Quint on the boat? Yeah, well, Quint was the, was the big shot fisherman. I'll catch him. Oh, yeah, yeah, remember? Remember? He, he slid down Swallowed the him alive. Yeah, right into his mouth, he went, remember? That was good. That was good. <laughs> that was good. The, way the, the, helicopter, helicopter, the helicopter scene was definitely I don't know if you guys scene. remember, they just had it last year. I went to the movies with my brother. They just had the 40th anniversary yeah, of that, 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 that was two, well, that was two years ago. Yeah. It was 42. Yeah, it was, uh, I saw that in the 75. Now, so 17 now. Robert Sanford nah, says George 1 was the best three fingers well, on that. Well, George 1 was released in 75, uh -huh. and, and 40 years would be 2015. So I looked at it two years ago. Exactly. Hey, wow. listen, let, let me just read something I haven't read. Our sponsor, Home He's Security on. Consultant LLC. Let's try well, Sean Starry. <laughs> Sean Starry, Home Security Consultant I'm LLC. I'm Check him out. Home. He's the owner, and he's a consultant of Home Security Consultant LLC. Check him out at homesecurityconsultantllc.com. Uh, he's from Freeport, Illinois, but you can call him at 815-238-3005 and call him up. You've got questions about your home or anything that needs security, cameras, anything. Call Sean Starry now. He is the owner, the consultant. He's at 125 North Wilbur Avenue in Freeport, Illinois. Email him at Sean Starry at homesecurityconsultant.com, LLC.com, or give him a call at 815-238-3005. He will make your home safe with all the security devices that you can imagine. Give him a call. I have a great idea. What? Next week, Chicken Man is doing all the advertisements. That's his task. Right. That's, right. that's his task. task. The Chicken Man. That's his task. <laughs> He's a chicken man from Alcatraz. And I think we got that name from. Because there was a real chicken man from Alcatraz, and we don't know what happened to him, so we had to name another guy. Um, he is a chicken man of all chicken men. He works for chicken. I didn't want to say, hey, Susan, you're a... Say my name. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? You want? You want? <laughs> I don't care, man. My stomach is killing me. What's the matter? How's your teeth? If I'm out. <laughs> What's the matter? Too know. much pizza? No, you yeah, swallowed how many? You, when you chip your tooth, you swallowed the other oh, piece. Here's the donut. Yeah. It was, yeah. That's what I you like get for putting a donut on a pizza. Yeah, right. Root canal today. No, 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 I didn't have root canal. I thought you said you said. No, they got uh, Tuesday they're doing it. What's the 21st? Then what were you doing the today? So Carl's Brewing Company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, this is the Wise Guys Show uh, on ddbradio.com, DDB Radio on TuneIn, Armed Forces Radio Network, Village Connection Radio, City World Radio, Facebook Live, YouTube Live. The Wise Guys Show. We'll be back after these Hello, messages with Carl Gottlieb. Wait, what? We are live on Village Connection Radio. Oh, all right. Jim Somali did it. We're live on Village Connection Radio also. Check us out now. Back after these messages. Bella Physical Therapy, located in Fairlawn, New Jersey, featuring one-on-one care. Bella Physical Therapy can help treat your orthopedic concerns. Village Connection Radio, thank you for streaming our video. We'll be back after these messages with Carl Gottlieb of Jaws, the screenwriter. It's easy to set up an appointment. Visit www.bella-pt.com or call 201-791-0008. That's 201-791-0008. To yourself to stop living in pain. Start the road to recovery. Call Bell Physical Therapy today. Tri State Health and Wellness. If you're searching for a doctor who truly cares about your health and well being, contact Dr. Alex at Tri State Health and Wellness. Dr. Alex specializes in treating law enforcement professionals and their families and features special hours to accommodate different work shifts. All necessary testing can be performed in their friendly and comfortable environment. Contact Tri-State Health and Wellness. <coughs> located in Fairlawn, New Jersey. Call 201-791-7771. That's 201-791-7771. Wayne Ford. If you are looking for a certified, used, or new vehicle, look no further. Visit Wayne Ford, New Jersey's law enforcement preferred dealer. Featuring the largest inventory of pre-owned vehicles in the tri-state area, Wayne Ford has been proudly serving the community for over 50 years. Conveniently located one quarter mile from the Willowbrook Mall on Route 46 in Wayne, New Jersey, contact Wayne Ford today. Toll free, 888-349. 6857. That's 888-349-6857. Kale Orthopedic Center. Featuring high performance care for bodies in motion. Kale Orthopedic is proud to provide comprehensive orthopedic care for New Jersey's finest. Every day you put your body at risk and Kale Orthopedic is here to help you. Contact Kale Orthopedic at 201-447-3880. That's 201 447 3880 Kale Orthopedic High performance care for bodies in motion If you're tired of sleeping alone each night Contact Dr. Doblin of At Home Sleep Solutions Dr. Doblin is New Jersey's law enforcement professional's preferred sleep apnea doctor With the use of a custom fitted oral device You can now look forward to a restful night's sleep Contact Dr. Doblin Featuring two convenient locations in Fairland in Trenton, New Jersey. Call 201-396-9338 or visit athomesleepsolutions.com. City Health Pharmacy, located at 23 Court Street in Newark, New Jersey. Come and experience why thousands of your neighbors choose City Health Pharmacy each and every month. City Health Pharmacy is a proud supporter of the men and women of New Jersey law enforcement, their families, and friends. Visit City Health Pharmacy today at 23 Court Street in Newark, New Jersey or call 862-772-0442. That's 862-772-0442. If you're looking for the widest variety of... 30 seconds! Entertaining, engaging, diverse, uncensored, and opinionated. Visit dtvradio.com. You can listen on your smartphone, tablet, or any mobile device. DTV Radio brings you the widest variety of talk programs such as Living Life Well, Your World Uncensored, The Canine Authority, and The Wise Guys Show. Visit www.ddvradio.com, the official radio network of NJ Blue Now. The opinions expressed by the host, callers, and guests are not those of DTVRadio.com, Envisage Productions, LLC, its advertisers, sponsors, or employees. You got it, Coach. If you want that, the Coach Kenshin, you're going to YMCA. All right, we're going out. Let's go. What do you want?
actions about it. Okay, we are back here on the Wise Guys Show, DVDRadio.com. I'm here with Freddy the Fireman. I don't know where the chicken man is. I don't know where Jerry the Plumber is. And just so you know, we just found out now we're on Village Connection Radio streaming live. Um, um, Jim, if you can hear me, uh, post uh, the, the link on our Facebook page. Uh, the, I'm, I'm having trouble with my phone with the internet here. Too many sources being used, but uh, um, we're waiting to hear from Carl. Okay, on the phone, on the phone right now, we have our next guest of the evening. The yes, I will introduce him. It was Carl Gottlieb, a classic screenwriter, best known for co-writing the screenplay for Jaws. <laughs> and, and I believe the two sequels, Jack, I cannot understand the theory, Jack, the jerk, and Steve Martin. Carl Gottlieb, I'm right, right there. Carl, welcome to the Wise Guy Show. <laughs> you think, you think. Oh, oh big? goodness. That's, that's, that's a... Uh, yeah, one guy counts. One of you sounds close, the other one sounds far away. That would be me. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a little close to the mic, Carl. No, I'm a big fan because I'm a big, big fan of the movie Jaws. How did this all get started? Peter Benchley... Wrote a book and you took off. You and Steven Spielberg, you took off. Yeah, and also uh, there's another writer involved in how the who didn't claim any credit and didn't get any credit, but he did an intermediate draft of the movie and he worked on it. So he's, one of, he's one of the guys. Uh, Carl, how did, how did you actually get a part in the movie? Was this something that you wanted to do or something that Steven Spielberg wanted? Because you had a you had a pretty significant role. You were like the mate you were like the mayor's pretty much the mayor's aide in uh, you know trying to yeah, get. I was I was uh, the, the coke unindicted coke spirit. I I you know, helped cover up the uh, the fish story. Uh, and, and the way that happened was uh, Stephen and I were friends. He knew I was an actor. He used me in a couple of TV TV movies when I was acting, and he knew I had some comedy chops. So uh, when he was getting ready to do a movie, so it might be a good idea if I could come down there and be in it. And I don't know how the crowd scenes and cuts with improvisation, but that was my fantasy improvisation. And it turned out that uh, working with the other place, I got the job and said I'd start, and uh, I went on and uh, suggested I rewrite the script, and I did that. Is, now there was a rumor that Richard Dreyfus, you know, when he was reading the script, he's like, I, "This movie's going to be more fun to watch because it's going to be like, excuse my language, it's going to be a bitch to shoot." But I would love to watch it. But did Richard Dreyfus do a movie that failed? That he said, "If I ever want a career as an actor, I better take this job." Well, it wasn't quite that. Uh, he did say when he was, uh, when they showed him the script. He did say, this is a movie I'd rather see than be in. I think it's exactly right. Uh, and then, uh, as we got closer and closer to shooting, and we didn't have Hooper, we didn't have an actor except for Hooper. Um, I, I was friendly with him. I mean, such a thing that we see, but I mean, it's a capacity. So I said, let me, let me see if I can find out where he is and get him to come up and at least talk to us about the rebound thing. Uh, right with the past of the old script, uh, the script that I was going to rewrite. So we got a kind of hold of him, he was luckily with a few spokes, we were going to go up and get another cast next week and go down and do the stuff shooting. And he came up and he uh, was wearing exactly the right wardrobe, he walked in the door and he said, don't change the thing. So he, he told him the movie was going to be funnier than we remembered, and we were going to get him to come. And then three weeks later, we were shooting. There now, it is. That's was, awesome. Was that's awesome. The character of Matt, Her Matt Hooper, like, was he written to be like a funny guy that challenges Quint with all these like one-liners, or was that just basic, basically Richard Dreyfuss just being Richard Dreyfuss? Excuse me, that was screenwriter writing dialogue for characters. That, yeah, that was brilliant. The way him and the rivalry that him and Quint had, and those one-liners with each other. I mean, basically, when Quint says, "So well, it's you know, at least one of us, us college rich kids, can move when we were wrong." Yeah, they had a natural uh, animosity as actors. You know, 
is uh, Richard was from London, faculty trained. Uh, uh, I mean, Robert, Robert Shaw was what London faculty trained actor. You know, he's, he's proven himself on the West End. He's a novelist. He's a playwright. And Richard was like a new kid. He was in his 20s. You know, he, you got to remember when, when uh, Dreyfus won the Oscar, he was the youngest actor that ever won the Oscar. He was like 28. He was like 28, I think, when he did Jaws. Yeah. Same as Gilbert. Roughly the same age. So it was, uh, you know, it was, it was fun to, to in, enjoy that on camera antagonism between the actors because it worked for the characters. So when I was writing dialogue for the two of them, I gave them more and more to do that was, you know, consistent with their attitudes as, as people. I was waiting for, you know, combination of actor and character. The most classic line of that whole movie uh, I, I, I the most classic line of that whole movie has to be, you know, with Dreyfus and Roy Scheider on the beach and the pleading with the mayor, the late, of course, Murray Hamilton at the time. I think you are going to ignore this particular problem until it swims up and bites you in the ass. Was that you? You wrote that, right? Did you write that? Did you write that? Did you write that? Yeah. That, that was He's a screenwriter. He wrote everything. I gotta, ask, I gotta ask one question. It might be a stupid question. Um, remember when Richard Dreyfus was in the cage and the shark was attacking the cage? At one point, did they actually show footage of a real shark? Did you guys use a real shark in that? Uh, yes. You did? Uh, okay. The, the, uh, there was, uh, I mean, it wasn't with Dreyfus, it was with a, uh, uh, it was in a, it was a, it was a empty shark cage that was in Australia. Okay. Uh, they, they, they filmed, uh, Ron and Valerie Taylor filmed some great white in Australia. And uh, the idea was going to be to use the footage of the great white and have uh, like a, a little person in a, in a little, little five-eighth scale wetsuit in, in the, you know, in the cage with these, with these 15, 18 foot sharks, and the sharks would look like they were 25 feet. Right. And that was the notion. It was, it was just pretty clever thinking. Yeah, because I picked that up, because when he was in the cage, like, he kind of looked up at the shark. You can see it was a real shark, because the mechanical shark wouldn't move yeah. like that. Damn, what do you yeah, watch? So, Detailed so, clips? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, the no, Jaws is one of my all-time favorite uh, movies. I just was never in a cave with a real shark in the water. No, the no, no. The cave being destroyed was was uh, the real. Right. But the dragon was dead in the water with a shark. No, no, no. Definitely not. <laughs> But there was a, um, Carl, there was a lot of mechanical problems with the, with the shark. I mean, Richard Dreyfus made the shark is working. The shark is not working. What type of mechanical problems did they have? Well, you got to remember this. <coughs> this was before CGI, before mechanical effects. If you see it in the movie, it's real and it's the size that you see it. So we had to build a shark that was like 25 foot and it was like three times. It looked like it was three times. Um, and that was a huge job. And then the shark had to move convincingly through the water, so that required other you know, 80,000 pounds of steel and iron on the bottom of the ocean. To, wow. You know, like a travel, kind of a track, a welded you know, with an arm that raised and lowered. It was quite, quite impressive and quite effective, but we were in such a hurry to start shooting. The studio wanted to film ready in time for the summer, so there was some huge amount of pressure to get the film done and, and there wasn't time to test the shark apparatus in, in the salt water. They tested it in, in, in the lake in, in, in California before they shipped it to uh, Martha's Vineyard. But it had never worked in, in, the, in the salt water before. The salt water has different, you know, completely different chemical uh, consistency than fresh water. And the minute the shark hit uh, salt water, all the relays and the switches that started to short out and it, it became a nightmare to operate the shark. So it's, it's not operated by electrical circuits anymore. It was, it's operated by pneumatic uh, rams and you know, hydraulics and pipes and air hoses. It was a, it was it was a, a disaster for huge success. 
one, one, one guy on the controls can roll the other guy. <laughs> open and close the mouth. Another guy on the controls will move the fins. Another guy to, uh, to, to, you know, to close the mouth. And all of them working you know, off camera. I don't like the shirt. I don't know, Carl. You did a great job because I was scared shit to go in the water probably for about three years after I saw that movie. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, it's, it's, you still are. Yeah. You know, so for the last 40 years, Anytime I ever meet somebody and they, I tell them that I had something, something to do with that movie, the first thing they say is, you know, I didn't go swimming for the <laughs> yeah, it's true. time. Yeah, it's true. They didn't go in the water, they didn't go in the swimming pool, they didn't take a bath, they didn't take a toilet. I mean, <laughs> well, you, I gotta definitely tell you, definitely wrote one of the best movies we ever made. From below, are you really vulnerable? And Carl, what really made that the horror film that it was? I mean, I, we just had Susan Backlady on the phone. What made that the horror film is we went, the movie went at least forty minutes before you actually seen the shark. Oh, right, right, it did. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and, that was, uh, that was partly I think because I'm the shark was working, and then it was partly because uh, once we knew that the shark was going to be a problem, uh, we, we wrote the script, Stephen and I, uh, using a movie called The Thing as a model, because in The Thing you don't see the creature until quite late in the movie also. It's a very terrifying film. Mm -hmm. the, the first so time, it thought we had Okay, I tell the people that look people out there and you show them what it's all up, then uh, I just, you, know, you don't have to see this thing like that. The first time you actually saw the shark, I believe, is when it, was when, it, when it swam into the estuary. And it, it's on its side and it, it, equal, it took the guy's leg off. That was the first time you actually saw it, but you didn't see it too good. Yeah. You, you, yeah. Don't, you don't get the clear glimpse of the shark with it. When Roy, Shard, when Roy Scheider starts chumming, yeah, I'm going to do some of this shit, and all of a sudden their head comes out of the yeah. water. That, I mean, in 1975, to be sitting in a movie theater to see that, that ought to be that was frightening. Awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. Well, I, I, I tell you, what, what, what are the reasons, what are the ways we knew that we would have at least a popular film? We didn't know it was going to be an icon. But we knew it was going to be a popular film, but when they were working on that scene in the lab, just timing it, you know, just doing that stuff. The guys who work in the lab, they've seen everything. No, they're not impressed. It's all soft and sad. And those guys who are, you know, completely I mean, hard and generous. When that shark came out of the water on the chumming scene, they jumped. They <laughs> jumped. Whoa, what? They, they, they were moved by it. You know what another scene so, made people jump was the head when it came out of the boat, right on the bottom, when they got the... Ben Gardner. <laughs> ben Gardner. Yeah, that's a, that's a huge jump. Oh, yeah. To, uh, when the film opened, uh, Stephen and my wife and I, we were all friends in those days, we go down to the, uh, we go out for dinner and we look at our watch and we go, hey, it's time for the head. And then we would go to uh, uh, one of the theaters in town that was playing the movie, you know, about 8.45, 9 o'clock, 9.15, you know, the audience was all in place. And, Manager would let us in. We'd sneak in the back and just stand in the back of the theater and wait for that moment when uh, the head had come. And you could watch the whole audience, 1,200 people, jump in the air at the same time. The whole audience would shift. And just had the music with it and everything like when it came out. It's like, wait! Yeah. Carl, did, did the script uh, change much once uh, filming started? Yeah, it was changing, it was evolving every day. I mean, we were writing, uh, I was rewriting right up until the time we finished the dialogue. Um, in July, we wrote the film everything that we could film without the shark. Uh, I got to go home, and Roy and Robert had to go out on the boat every day for the next two months. Getting, you know, now, did the, su the, suge the suggestions for script changes came from the actors, Steven Spielberg, and you? Is, is it normal that the, the screenwriter is there during filming? 
know that this play is, 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 is kind of unusual. It's not, not the best way to make a movie. Uh, normally, the script is finished well in advance, and all the departments are there. And, and, then, and then it's locked in normally, right? We were kind of making it up as we went along, and we go, the only thing we could call the clue in broad strokes, we said, okay, we're never going in the White House, so we don't bother touching the White House. There's no more people in the White House. We're going to be in the you know how, because that needs to be perfect, you know? And we're going to have a lot of dialogue in the Brody House. Only in the morning and the evening. And, you know, so we just, we knew what we were going to shoot, but we weren't quite sure of the actual script papers until sometimes the day before shooting. Uh, Carl, correct me if I'm wrong. In Quint's name in the book was not Quint. Wasn't it Lobsterman Elton or something like that? Because I know the book is a little bit different from the screenplay. Um, I think he's called Quint, but he has no uh, no rationale of why he hates the shot. <laughs> Carl, how were all the uh, actors? Were they uh, easy to work with, or uh, who had attitudes who didn't? Who Shaw? Who? I, all the actors. On the show? On the show, yeah. Well, he was a pleasure to work with, except he, he liked uh, to have a cocktail late in the day. <laughs> and sometimes that would interfere. So some of those boat scenes, yeah, it, he was actually intoxicated. He was in Indianapolis, <laughs> and, and he, he did sober the next day, and, you know, it worked just fine. Was the final scene shot, was that shot in the actual ocean, or was that shot in the lake? Had it, or was that shot in salt water, fresh water? Where exactly was that shot? I can't remember from, from my reading. You're, you're breaking up, I can't quite hear it. The, the, fi the final sheet scene where, <laughs> uh, where Robert Shaw slid into the shark's mouth, was that was that shot? Um, well, that that was in that was in the water just off of the the, the, the shooting location. How many takes did they have to do to get that blood? That around the background, the way the way it's framed looks like it's the open ocean. How many um, how many takes did they have to do for Richard Wright for uh, Robert Shaw to just scream and the blood to come out of his mouth? That was one take. G guys, I, I can't hear I can't hear what you're saying. Speak into the mic. Yeah. Was that um, the final scene where? Uh, Robert Shaw fell into the shark's mouth. How many takes yeah. was that when when he you know he actually screamed and the blood spit out and then they just put him under the water? How many how many takes was that? Was that one take and it was just good to go? So I I'd, I'd have to look at the production report. That if you look at it carefully, the, there's there's the reason why Verna Fields won the Academy Award for ed, her editing. It's many shots, not just one take. It's a shot of the. You know, the wide shot of the shark throwing itself on the boat. Then it's a close up of Shaw sliding. And there's a two shot of Shaw and uh, uh, Scheider. He's got his hand trying to keep from sliding. And then there's a, another camera change where the, you see him sliding into the mouth of the shark. It's like it's multiple cuts until the shark, you know, clamps his jaws down. And then in the car, the, the shark you know, pulls it back up the water, and that's the end of it. Wasn't there now? Out of out of place. So good. That's probably three days work. Okay, three I mean days work. Wow. I was reading, I was reading up on Jaws that the original ending was going to be where the shark just bites down on the oxygen tank and explodes. That Roy Scheider wasn't going to shoot a gun at it. How many different endings were there until they decided on the Roy Scheider ending? Smiling son of a. Well, once once we ironed out. You know, who was who? What was the trio? What were the heroes going to be like? Uh, everything from the book changed. Uh, in the book, Cooper dies, uh, Quint dies, everybody, everybody dies except uh, Brody. Uh, but by that time, you know, we were we enjoyed the character of Cooper, and we wanted to see him live. And the producers made a decision. They said, "Well, well let's let's not let's let's think he's dead, but not really." So when he popped at the end of the movie, you know, our other leading man is okay. Shaw, you know, had to die because it was, you know, him against the, the fish, and they, 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 you know, the fish got him, and then Scheider gets the fish, and you know, justice is served to the good guy that was win, and the bad fish goes out of blood and guts. 
let me ask you this. What did you think of some of the sequels? I mean, obviously you can't ever duplicate the original. I thought Jaws 2 was really good, especially the way Roy Shutter challenged the shark at the end. Yeah, but remember, um, uh, uh, Jaws 2 was the most successful sequel in the history of movies until Godfather 2. Wow. It was a very, very uh, presentable sequel. I'm happy to have worked on it. And then under the same conditions, I came on board very late and was writing, you know, just ahead of the schedule. Uh, so, uh, and I, I also worked on Jaws 3D, and then, then I finished. But, uh, in Jaws 4, I... <laughs> you just didn't care for Jaws 4 that much. Go ahead, admit it. <laughs> to this day, I've never seen it. No interest in it. I, I, I may watch it for historical value someday. But, uh, I mean, I didn't think it was... Hey, Carl, Carl. I'm sorry. I, I, uh, I, anyway, I just wanted to ask you. You had a lot of fun with Jaws. What what was more fun to work with? Uh, the Jerk, Caveman, or Jaws? Well, each one was a own, had its own challenges. In Jaws, you know, we were working against uh, all kinds of odds to make a movie that you know, nobody knew was going to be a hit. Uh, everybody just did the best job they could. Uh, the Jerk, we knew that Steve was popular, and we knew that he was funny, and uh, Steve and I wrote the screenplay together, and then uh, both the writers and Michael O'Reilly who worked on it with Carl Reiner. And that film was a collaborative effort. That script was done well in advance of shooting. It was made for a modest budget, shot very cleanly and quickly. So that was you know, kind of classic and how good movies were made. And then uh, Caveman was a great adventure because uh, we shot, I had a lead actor who, although he was a global celebrity, a real star, he wasn't a trained actor, so kind of hit and miss with him, though, but he was a very dedicated actor, and he was going to play from a place, so he got on the doctor, got on the better, they got married. That was a match made in the movie, and then on the show, and it's a couple of times. So all three, you know, and on the stage, and I was the director, so, and I was responsible for everything, and I was looking at the script, you know, with one eye of the writer going, okay, this is all written. And with the other eye, I'm going, wait a second, how do I shoot this stuff? You know, they're, they're not talking any dialogue. How do, we do, how do we work around that? So I have a lot of problems. But in all three cases, uh, I'm very happy with this. Yeah, that, let me tell you something. Jaws, back then, Jaws, The Jerk, and Caveman, I got to say, back when I was a kid, were one of my top favorite movies. Yeah. I couldn't wait for it to come on HBO or... or um, it, it was just something that we used to look forward to, the jerk. I, I can't tell you how many times me and my friends just sat there watching the jerk and just laughing. And then Caveman, Caveman, we, we actually remember buying the, the VCR tape and just watching it on those nights where, uh, Friday nights when we were hanging out. And, and uh, Jaws were like, you just can't, I mean, you, you put so much into our lives and I can't tell you how, how honored I am to have you on the show. Um, but... Uh, I wanted to ask you about you being a comedian, because uh, we have a few comedians in here. Are you still doing any comedy? Uh, you know, the, I know, I forget who, 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 who asked, what are you, a comedian? <laughs> um, I, I did improvisational comedy when I started. I was doing a show called The Committee. It was kind of like uh, Second City and up like the Brigade, the Brown, I got my ass and I got my ass in the band. Uh, I wrote for a lot of people. I wrote for Steve Martin, I wrote for Richard Fryer, for Richard. You know, so, uh, you know, I like, I like comedy because it's, it's difficult. You know, you never know if it's going to work until you get it finished in front of the audience and the last or not. So, uh, I credit whatever success I've had in comedy is partly because I did comedy and I performed it, so I kind of know if something's going to get a laugh and 
Uh, you can never be 100% certain. But when you perform material on stage, you've got to be able to look and look up to it. And then you've got to convince the audience that you're doing. Yeah. 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 Yeah
serving the community for over 50 years. Conveniently located one quarter mile from the Willowbrook Mall on Route 46 in Wayne, New Jersey. Contact Wayne Ford today. Toll free 888-349-6857. That's 888-349-6857. Kale Orthopedic Center. Featuring high performance care for bodies in motion. Kale Orthopedic is proud to provide comprehensive orthopedic care for New Jersey's finest. Every day you put your body at risk and Kale Orthopedic is here to help you. Contact Kale Orthopedic at 201-447-3880. That's 201-447-3880. Kale Orthopedic, high performance care for bodies in motion. If you're tired of sleeping alone each night, contact Dr. Doblin or at Home Sleep Solutions. Dr. Doblin is New Jersey's law enforcement professional's preferred sleep apnea doctor. And with the use of a custom-fitted oral device, you can now look forward to a restful night's sleep. Contact Dr. Doblin, featuring two convenient locations in Fairlawn and Trenton, New Jersey. Call 201-396-9338 or visit athomesleepsolutions.com. City Health Pharmacy, located at 23 Court Street in Newark, New Jersey. Come and experience why thousands of your neighbors choose City Health Pharmacy each and every month. City Health Pharmacy is a proud supporter of the men and women of New Jersey law enforcement, their families, and friends. Visit City Health Pharmacy today at 23 Court Street in Newark, New Jersey, or call 862-772-0442. That's 862-772-0442. If you're looking for the widest variety of talk programs, entertaining, engaging, diverse, uncensored, and opinionated, visit dtvradio.com. You can listen on your smartphone, tablet, or any mobile device. DTV Radio brings you the widest variety of talk programs such as Living Life Well, Your Way Uncensored, The King and the Third, and The Wise Guys Show. Visit www.dtvradio.com, the official radio network of NJ Blue Now. Your intro is about to play. Let's go! You know why? Because you're on YouTube Live. Let's go! <laughs> Alright, so you, you know Adam, so that's going to help. <laughs> Ready. All right, Brad, we're back here on the Wise Guy Show. I am Freddie the Fireman, the co-host tonight. Um, uh, the host will come in. You know, he comes in whenever he wants. You know, that's all right. That's all right. He wants to host the show, but he wants to stand outside. I uh, hope uh, next week we don't do this. Um, we want to uh, mention our sponsor, uh, Home Security Consultant, Sean Starry. He is the owner consultant of Home Security Consultant. What's that? Oh. Oh. He's, just, he's the home. He is the owner of Home Security Consultant LLC. Sean Starry. He is in Freeport, Illinois. He's the owner and the consultant of Home Security Consultant LLC. Give him a call, 815-238-3005, to find out how to secure your home 100% so you can sleep good at night. Um, and uh, Sean will help you out uh, with all the gadgets and. I'm telling you, and it's a good prices. So uh, right now, um, in our studio, we have our in-studio guests. Finally, for the evening, after all of the, the time slot changes, um, we uh, this uh, so young man uh, is an author, an actor, a dancer, comedian, entertainer, and a magician. Um, he actually knows our official magician, Michael Healy. Um, All the above. Okay, <laughs> he is uh, he's involved in theater. He's done a lot of stuff. Uh, he's he's up and coming kid. He, he's got a lot of talent. I want to welcome our our guest uh, in studio guest of the evening. He we found we met him through um, uh, uh, Andrew Wallace, um, and we want to welcome him today, Adam Lucas to our team. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Th
you. All right. So, Adam, how's your experience here today on the Wise Guy Show? So far, it's great. You having fun? Yeah. Isn't fun. this great? Yeah. You going to tell your friends about us? Absolutely. They're listening right now. Hi, Jacob. There you go. You're live off YouTube, wherever yeah. you are, you know, through your Facebook. Facebook. So, um, I don't even know where to start, but let's start with theater. You've done some stuff in theater, and uh, <laughs> you, you, you've done uh, Ringmasters, Haunted Castle. Yes, that was a, at last October uh, at Liberty State Park. There's this big event called uh, Spooky Terminal, and there's about 20,000 20, or so people. And, and myself and Andrew Wallace, we put together a show, and we gave them a magic show. And we were there all day doing shows throughout the day, and the look on kids' faces was amazing. Was Andrew your assistant or something? Yes, he was. He don't he, do magic. I don't remember him telling me he does magic. He, he does a little. I told him. So okay, okay. Up. And then uh, we had uh, one other person help me with magic that day. So the event went well. You do, is this something that you do every year? Uh, yes. Sadly, the character ringmaster is coming to an end. I've been doing it for five years. Uh, oh. I, I think it's time He's to retire. I think it's time to retire the character ringmaster because it is something I do every October, but. Coming up and coming, we do have a new show opening up next year. Myself and Nate Lang, who also performed for Mike uh, at Magic on Main. So it's going to be a very good experience next year. What do you like mostly doing? Authoring, uh, uh, acting, dancing, comedian, uh, entertaining? Or, what, what do you, what's, your, what's your favorite? As of right now, I enjoy the writing because I can merge myself into this world I created. And I can think, I can put whatever I think on that page. Nobody's going to stop me. My co-author, Emily, and I, we are creating the second book right now as we speak. And uh, here, actually, the poster for the sure, first. Here, you're live. Oh. Show yeah. it. Just no. post it up. Just show everybody. Uh, so, far, so far, right now, the writing is what's... Uh, and for what's those people on, on YouTube, just to check it out. No. YouTube. YouTube. You say Anthony Source. <laughs> Hello, Earth is cold. Don't worry, he don't do drugs. Yeah, right. He's just, he just uh, born that way. Right. Right. Uh, but, uh, I'm checking it. He said, check it out. I'm checking it out. Oh, all right, check it out. And then I also have uh, these two here. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, just show it all. The house beneath the woods. That would be my book, yes. Ah, uh, <laughs> no. Adam, tell them where they can purchase the book. They can purchase it on Lulu.com, Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, BooksBilly.com, and IndieBound.com. That's where uh, the five main sites that are selling it right now. Can I now, go to Barnes? Oh, wait a minute. You're, you're also a mentalist? Yes, I am. Can you do something on... I, can, uh, I think the chicken man. Can you do something on live on, on the studio right now with the chicken man? I mean, I'll attempt to do this. I haven't done this in a while, so it might go wrong, but uh, anything uh, can uh, happen. Uh, uh, it can't hurt. I, I now, think the best can be. You want, you want to know why I, they call me a mentalist? I don't even know what mentalist is. Because oh, they, because I talk to people who are mental. So I well, mental or something. Make the best the candidate. Thing. All right, let's go for it. I want you to choose a number from 1 through 10. Do not tell me that number, correct? All right. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Did you remember higher than five? Yeah. Okay. I'm getting the feeling you chose something lower than ten, of course, because you wouldn't pick a decimal. That'd be crazy. Right. A lot of people would pick a decimal and they ruin the trick. But I'm getting the feeling you chose something less than eight. Am I correct? Yeah. You chose seven? Yeah. See that? Wow. wow. Oh, Let's give him a yeah. round of applause. How good is that? Is that nice? Ooh, 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 ooh. That is something I can only do once. I have uh, not okay, done that can only do it once, and that's the truth. That's it. Congratulations! Great job. Oh man, that's that's. Um, we know we had a famous mentalist in this uh, studio at one time. You know mm -hmm. who that is? Uh, I'm trying to remember the name. I, I saw it earlier. He's amazing. The amazing. Creskin, you're not supposed yes. to be a mentalist. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's, he's, uh, he's definitely, he got you. He they got, got you. So, um, got you. Adam Lucas, I uh, uh, now, um, illusionist. Oh. What, what is it that you do with illusion? I like, I like all this stuff. When, when I'm on stage, what I do, it prefers, uh, there's mentalism act where when I was in Magic on Main, I did mainly a mix of all three. Mm. The conjuring, which is like creating something from the supernatural, from the beyond, contacting someone from the beyond. Uh, mentalism is reading the mind like I just did, and illusions are something that is what you see, but not what I see. Something that I can make the mind deceive, and something I can make the eyes believe. Something that what you believe is not true, but I make it so that you think it's true. And everything I show 
in the production I put on every year is that our mind has a potential and these illusions show the power of our mind and our creativity. So that is what my illusionists are. And we are putting together group. Did you ever do did you ever go see Masters of Illusions? Uh yes. You know hit hit uh, not you know we we got a lot of friends that are magicians and wrestlers here. <laughs> his cousin, <laughs> his cousin, myself. his cousin's Rocco Solano. Did you ever hear of him? Uh, I might have. I'm not sure. Every magician knows Rocco Solano. Actually, yes, I have. I have now. <laughs> so we got like a family of wrestling and mm -hmm. magicians and. Uh, I, I'm a wrestler myself, actually. Are you? Rec wrestler. Get out of here. Going into high school currently, but yes, I. You know, he's a, he's in eighth grade. This kid, listen, when you're a millionaire, millionaire and I'm like seven years old, can you just at least like help me out a little bit? Adam, tell them how old you are. I am currently 14 years old. My 14 years old and do a little stuff. 14 years old got over on a 40 year old man. He wrote books. He wrote books. He wrote books. <laughs> I didn't even read a book. <laughs> no, me neither. I'm gonna do a shout out to our former uh, official magician. Uh, he, he said hello Jimmy. to you, James Chalice. Well, I wanted to uh, throw a shout out to you. He wanted us to take care of you, make sure you were. Well. <laughs> yeah, he wanted us to give you a kiss. Come on, he's 14. But, um, Calm down. Let's go. Right. Um, now, what's this? Um, 2009. Uh, this is a while. Trojan Women. Trojan Women was a show I did a while back. Uh, it was my first theater production, full theater production, that actually got me into all the magic and all the drama. Uh, it was with the NJC group. My father and I did it. Um, it's hard to remember because then and it was a lot longer. Uh, math is hard. Uh, eight years ago, and we did that was the first ever show my dad and I did together, and it will always hold a special place in my heart because that is what got me into theater. It was about the Trojan War at the time and the gods and. Uh, played a kid in the show that got killed and at one point in the show I'm running out to my mother I, I would always remember this and then I get killed and I come out on the sh my father's shield and it will always be a special place in my heart that's the first ever show I did so you were like six seven years old yeah wow wow and now you took now in 2000 uh, this year you took second place in Woodridge High School talent show yes I did uh, James actually how, I mean like second place that's that's got to be a big uh, honor here first loser okay. yes how, how did you uh, how did who what did how did first place what did they do they did a guitarist act they oh, so I, that's, I, that's I not even wait, no, no damn it, that kid knew somebody <laughs> that kid that kid that started when he was five years old on that damn guitar right, right. no but, but what, what did you do to win the I mean coming second I mean that's that's just as what was your uh, I placed the prediction in Mount Abu nine days before the show, and that prediction was hanging. Um, same thing with Magic May, I have the same thing here. Was hanging on our school window for a week, week and a half. And at the show, I gave a dictionary to a judge, and they picked a word. And in that envelope, nine days before, I wrote the word that was in there. I had proof on social media, I had proof everywhere else, I had a timestamp on there, and the word was revealed to be correct. And throughout, I was telling them how the word of the mind, what happens now, happens now. What if I can control the past and our destinies in the future? So I did a bit of mentalism, a bit of predictions, and overall it went great. And then a few months later, I was asked by Michael Healy to do Magic on Main, and I did the same concept. And I saw everyone's faces again. It is a great effect, and that will always stick with me. So that is what I did. For that. So awesome. what what happened was Adam mailed me an envelope that was sealed up. Actually, it was an envelope inside an envelope, and we hung it up in the Dallas Theater window. And then when he got to perform, there were actually three events that he predicted yeah. the outcome of each of the three events, and it was sealed inside the envelope that wow, nobody tampered with or anything like that, right? Yep, so I make sure it's duct tape all over. Yep, it was good. It was the hit now, of the Now, did you, do, are you serious about maybe one day being a comedian also, or are you more into the magic? Correct. How about magic comedian? I love that. I, I do that for the children, but... Rocco does a little bit of that. Not as yeah, much, yeah. but he does a little taste of that. He'll do so. Maybe. Like, he'll go, ta-da, and you're like, no, that's not the card. No, I, I didn't say I was, this was your card. It's like, yeah. ta-da. You know, that, yeah. that's a good one. That's all right. So as, as of right now, I have a character. Uh, I perform the, with him in October, and I go to conventions with him. His name is Smiley Puppet. That is how I express my comedy. Jerry, you have the Smiley Puppet, right? <laughs> so, um, he's a Mortimer Snurd doll. Me too. He's a Mortimer Snurd doll that I took, and I like put a hat on him, I customized it, put staples in him, I paint, repainted him, and I rebuilt him. It's this character of my own. 
and I just put a mask on, so I'm not doing ventriloquism, I'm not nothing. I'm literally, I'm actually talking, but no one can see my mouth move. So that way the focus is on the puppet, and that's how I express it to comedy. I have the puppet insult people as they walk by, because the puppet gets away with it. I know. So, yeah, that is how I express my comedy, and then I also do a little bit of comedy magic here and there, but mainly, right now, my magic is focused on bizarre, mentalism, conjuring, illusionists, all that. So who, who's your inspiration in like writing? Michael Healy. Thank you. Besides me, he just wants to hear it. I know. In, in the writing, my inspiration is of course Stephen King, Edgar Allan Poe, J.K. Rowling, wow. R.L. Stein, all those authors. Uh, their work is a big, huge inspiration of mine, and you will see that in House of Neat Woods. And then for the magic, definitely Houdini. His acts always inspired me. Uh, Blackstone, maybe Copperfield. I his always adored me. David Blaine, here and there, yes, he's impressive. Uh, and Chris Angel, definitely, yes and no. Uh, but there were a lot of magicians that inspired me. And for the acting, I would have to say, uh, probably my father got me into that. Well, and oh, is he an actor? Did he, has he done yeah. acting? Yeah. Explain what your dad does. Uh, he's currently the actor at Medieval Times, plays the king. Wow, really? we yeah. were just there. Yeah. 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 Yes. yes. We were just there. And, uh, th th does he put on a beard? Uh, Can you hook us up yeah. like a truck? <laughs> <laughs> oh my but, god, I didn't know that. We were just in, yeah. not even uh, uh, three weeks ago. Weeks ago. Uh, he's a writer, uh, actor. He goes to LA. Uh, he will be goes all over the state doing events for his book with my grandfather. So let me ask you a question. Sure. What can you do to get us on that show? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. Maybe we'll tie us. We'll just get up there. Oh, yeah, what are we going to do here? Check out the <laughs> now, now these other these other things I, I looked into a little bit of your uh, resume. Um, 2018 writer for the Smiley Aspect. Is yes, that like that, something coming soon? That is a Smiley puppet. What I just explained. Uh, I am giving him his own web series. So like what we're doing now, he will be doing on his own, and he'll be explaining what's current events but from his viewpoint. So I go and do skits with him, and I have people on the show all the time. And we are currently right now. I'm writing the pilot. Okay, all right. And currently we will be we will theme be filming probably this December, January, and it should be out by spring of 2018. Do you have friends in real life? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, I'm just checking. What about, I have yeah, like one. It's quality, not quantity. <laughs> what about the spirits of the shadow? That, shadow that will be actually what I was just about to get into. Shadows. Okay. That is the follow-up to the House Beneath the Woods. Uh, and, and that's in progress. You, yes. Okay, all right. That's why it's, I figured 2018 we're not here yet, <laughs> but you're working on it. Yeah, my co-author, uh, We actually, she actually did not do the first book with me. She joined on for the second, and I invited her, and I said, hey, would you like to help? And her ideas for the second book amazed me. And shout out to Emily, her name is Emily Cuesta. She will be writing it with me, and possibly the third as well. Uh, these books, I want to emerge the reader, and with Emily's help, I think I can succeed in that goal. And how old is this Emily? Same age as me, 14. Wow. wow. Look at and, um, uh, now, now, do, do you... Um, do you go to, uh, well, you obviously go to, uh, you're in high school now? Uh, about grade, to be, yes. About to be? Yes. You're, so you're graduating yeah. now? Wednesday. Wednesday. Where are you going? Wow. Wednesday. Congratulations. Where are you going to high school now? Uh, Woodridge High School. Okay. Oh, okay. And, uh, but now you said something about wrestling. What, what, what are you doing? What got you into that? Oh, uh, that was just, I saw a paper for it, and <laughs> my mother said, well, Adams, the magic's not too much, okay? And she wants you to yeah, wrestle? She, wants it. she got you out of rap magic to do wrestling? Yeah. That would be like the, the opposite, she, I would think. She suggested football, and I said, I don't want to die, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like, I know, so... Oh, about boxing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I've never heard it. So, uh, wrestling, it's... I looked at it. A lot of my friends uh, in school, a lot of kids in my grade do it. So I decided, you know what? It's not going to hurt. First year, Oh, it is going to hurt. It's going to hurt long. <laughs> Hell yeah. I was wrong, yeah. but uh, over time I gradually progressed, and now it is something that I enjoy. I enjoy watching the wrestling that you guys talk about, and I enjoy wrestling on my own, like real wrestling. Who's real your wrestling. favorite wrestler? Who inspired? Oh, that is the, like as you mean like uh, real or WWE? <laughs> yes. oh. WWE, tell us. The chicken man. That, I really don't follow, to be honest. You I know, don't you know who, was, who he was very close with and was more like a father figure to him? Jimmy Superfly Snooker. Uh, yes, I have heard. He just passed recently. Yeah. Um, then, uh, He's 14 years old. He didn't really know Jimmy right. Superfly Snooker. Listen, Snooker. everybody knows Jimmy knows Superfly Snooker. Even a six year old knows him. Yeah, I mean, he is Even like the guy who did right. something in wrestling. Uh, I know. Um, but, um, 
Now, uh, is there anything like a web page, a Facebook page, media page, anything you want to promote, Instagram? Uh, Just let it all out now. We yeah. didn't have this when we were 14 years old. Right. No. My, my website right now is adamlucas.sim.dif.com, sindif.com. That is where people can find the links to the books. They can find uh, they can find all the videos of me performing in the past. They can find what's upcoming. Uh, like Very soon, uh, this will be on the web website uh, I put all my past performances everything that I've done in the past on there and people can find more about me and they can go book me for events on there so that's where everything is right? what, do you, what do you think you're leaning towards career one that's what I'm I think right answer. now but would be I'm a mind reader so <laughs> You right. already got a famous last name, Lucas. So you already got, you already got yeah, a famous right. name. Yeah, exactly. He's got that going that for That is the number one question I'm asked all the time. Well, is there a relation to George? And I say, no. I well, wish. we know that, but it's, uh, <laughs> you have, you have, you know, I want to be living you have the name. You have the name. Yeah. you got that going for you. So I think writing and directing is probably okay, my exactly. calling in life. Because uh, currently right now for The House Beneath the Woods, something I forgot to mention, we have a movie coming out in 2019. So huh? is, that, uh, is that Yellow Scare? <laughs> Is that Yellow Scare? No, no, no. The House Beneath the Woods is getting oh, its own okay. movie. And I, I was asked to write it, and we're like three fourths away from the script. And it should be out by 2019 if all goes well. So, yeah, I'm looking for it. Of course, I Listen, you let us know. I want you to stay in contact with us. Are you on Facebook? Yes, I am. Okay, stay in contact with yeah. us on Facebook. Let us know, update on everything, whatever we could, we could uh, uh, show up to help you promote. with. We we'll promote you, even um, uh, back you and everything. We just show up and, uh, what is it? I'm support. If you're going to have a casting call about your support movies, and you do have a lot of actresses yeah. and actors. Send me your link and I will post it this way. Hopefully, people that we deal with will come in. At least try out Absolutely. For you. We have a lot of people that like doing uh, horror, acting and horror and stuff. Mm -hmm. you, uh, anything about HorrorCon? You doing anything for them? Uh, as of right now, no. Well, we're throwing a go where were you with our buddy Ryan Scott yeah. Weber, that's for sure. Towards towards December, I have, and I'd like to make this announcement right now. For the people listening, uh, in December, I will be releasing a prequel to House Me the Woods that will explain more of the villain's origin. When that comes out, I will be going to more conventions more uh six flags fright fest is one that i always nice. go to we like, always go there too I, uh, so let us know uh, we saw andrew all yeah. dressed up on it he tell you yeah i was i see it i've seen him go backstage i grabbed him i was like you're in trouble he was like, <laughs> so there was there was a lot that uh i i will be doing in december with the release of this new short story uh rise of the nightmares what it's called and it, then again it will be out on amazon and amazon.com amazon Kindle as well because they contacted me and they wish for me to do that so that, that will be coming out this is when when uh, we're doing horror con and chiller in september and october mm -hmm. if you get us some stuff to give out like some if you make some uh, yeah. some cards or something we'll drop them off and lay them out and then people they grab all that stuff they look through it they of course it. yeah what was it rise of the nightmare rise of the nightmare yes i see that every morning my, my wife gets it <laughs> <laughs> and adam agreed to come back in october to do a special thing with you guys for halloween with smiley the puppet yes yeah. i i think he's perfect for the show because it is not me talking, it's the puppet. So I put a mask on and the puppet just goes at it. I say what I want, I say what comes to my mind. There is no gate at all. Like, I say what I want. And if I get in trouble, the puppet gets in trouble. I, I get away with it. It wasn't me. I just want you to know, because we are friends with Creston, he came in here twice, he uh -huh. called in once, and we meet him all the times when we go. And I want you to know when he comes in, if he, if and when he comes in again, you are always welcome to come in and you need him, and uh, we'll have a great time. Thank um, you. Now, um, just before we go and thank everybody and end the show, um, we're going. Can we do one thing behind the scenes after the show ends? Yeah, sure. Magic sure, sure, with sure. Andrew yeah, and yeah, yeah. with uh, Adam yeah. um, and uh, that, that kind of yeah, connection. Okay. Yeah. So kind of connection. this is the Wise Guy Show. How much time <laughs> do we got, Jose? One minute. Okay, we got one minute, but we want to thank um, Susan Bacalini. <laughs> George Special is, is unbelievable. Oh, Jerry, awesome. Carl Gottlieb, uh, let's thank Carl. The George screenwriter, the actual screenwriter, the movie Jaws. I mean, what's better than that, right? I mean, that's, I mean, that's a classic. And uh, we also definitely want to thank Adam Lucas, actor, entertainer, and musician, mentalist. I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. You're going to have a great career, I have yeah. a feeling. Um, just make sure you just stay in school, though, and get that. Uh, <laughs> Oh, no, like from my not like, uh, school not kids. like some of us in here. Yeah. <laughs> the year 2019, he's resigning from school. Who are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I'll be in LA. <laughs> we want to thank our sponsor, Home Security Consultant LLC. Thank you, thank you for sponsoring our show. And uh, 
we got some stuff coming up in the future. We got we're working on Bowser. We're working on our next uh, on the 28th. We've got the Animal House special. Um, Mark, Mark Metcalf and uh, Babs from uh, Animal House. We're getting them to call in. Also, uh, another special guest would be Max Gale, who was Wojo Hoets, Detective Wojo Hoets from Barney Miller. We've got um, a lot of big things. We've got the Back to the Future 2 movie um, reunion, and we've got uh, Delia Shepard, thanks to Jerry. Uh, so uh, Saturday Night Fever. Saturday Night Fever we're working on. Um, and also, real quick, I wanted to mention, Relieve Live, Bob Levy, the Reverend Bob Levy, every Tuesday night on ddvradio.com from 9 to 11 p.m. That's, uh, that's where we last left off. Recommended for mature audiences. Levy Live. Listen to the radio legend, the Reverend Bob Levy on Levy Live every Tuesday night between 9 and 11. Check him out. It is coming up next week. He guaranteed me that. I played it for you. This is the Wise Guys Show. On behalf of the Wise Guys, I want to thank everybody for listening in and coming in. Now, let's go behind the scenes. We're going to close this show and we're going to go behind the scenes with Mike, uh, uh, Mike Levy. Yeah, okay. I'll, Mike, I'll, I'll answer to that. Mike Healy. That's Ma okay. Master Magician Mike. I've only been here two weeks. Mike I don't know the names down there. Oh, oh, Master Healy. Magician Mike Healy behind the scenes doing some magic for us. We'll see you next week with the host, Anton the Source, right. the Chicken Man Bye. from Alcatraz. Healy will be here. This is going to be a great show. Thank you, everybody, for Mike tuning in tonight. We're going back behind the scenes for some magic. This is the Wise Guy Show on ddvradio.com, DDV Radio on TuneIn, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Village Connection Radio, Village Connection Radio Streaming, and um, City World Radio, and Armed Forces Radio. This is the Wise Guy Show. See you next week, everybody. Bella Physical Therapy, located in Fairlawn, New Jersey. Sometimes the one on one care. Bella Physical Therapy can help treat your orthopedic and sports injuries, chronic pain, men's health conditions, and women's health conditions. Also, treating headaches and tinnitus and vestibular disorders. It's easy to set up an appointment. Visit www.bella-pt.com or call 201-791-0008. That's 201-791-0008. You owe it to yourself to stop living in pain. Start the road to recovery. Call Bella Physical Therapy today. Tri-State Health and Wellness. Sure, sure. Thank you for Stay alive. Who cares about your health and well-being? I don't know why it's just an hour and 22 minutes. Dr. Alex specializes in treatment. Why would it say an hour and 22 minutes? Maybe the internet just started it? A hundred twenty-two point. Oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. All right. We're going, where are we doing magic? Right here. Can I stand in front of you or behind you? Stand in front of you. If you want, stay where that chair is. All right. Do you need a? Do you need a? This is a three All right. So. When I was a kid in Times Square, when it used to be sleazier than it is now, uh, this was a very popular game. You don't really see this much anymore. It's called Three Card Monty. Two black cards, in this case, King Clubs, Red Ace, Ace, Ace of Hearts. So they give you the impression, I'm not going to teach you how it works, although I'm just going to tell you there's some sleight of hand involved. They don't tell you when, you, when you're Put your money down. So twenty dollars, uh, twenty dollars a guess will will win you twenty dollars if you can pick uh, the red ace. These are regular cards from a pinochle deck. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to get two identical cards. So they let you win the first couple of times. All you have to do is watch where the red ace is, and then you put your twenty dollars on the red ace. You turn it over, you win. So they'll let you win a couple of times. All right, watch the red ace. That's all you have to do. Keep your eyes on the red ace. All right, where's the red ace? Put your $20 down. Now you're up $40. Now they don't like you, all right, because you just took $40 of their money. Watch, I'll do this a little bit faster. Okay, Jerry, point to the red ace. Were you watching? This one over here. Now, see, now I did this sleight of hand, so he's not going to win. He won $40. He just lost. I lost uh, 20. He lost 20. There it is right there. All right, watch again. I'll do it a little bit faster. All you have to do, keep your eyes on the red ace. Now, where is it? 
in the middle. Most people would say the middle. Now we're the even left. because wow. you lost. All right. You said the left over here. Ah, right, get that cigarette. Down. Come on, don't mess up <laughs> Now, now the uh, the finale. Let's pretend this is a beer bottle. Oh my God, I'm going to get cancer. <laughs> So by now, usually the spectator will leave. Uh, but usually the usually the last move is this. All right, uh, when you start to walk away, they go, no, 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 come back, come. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you win. And I don't do this often, but I'm gonna let you. Now you, all your money's gone. Well, you lost the forty, but you still have your tour. You know, they used to get yeah, tourists yeah. with this, right? So. Uh, now the tourist, uh, let's say you have a couple hundred bucks. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna let you win. So we're gonna put the beer bottle on the ace, and I'm gonna let you see the king and two kings there, and they put all their money over here, and then they lose. Oh, the all right, because it's there. So that's it. Sleight of hand, little wow. sleight of hand. They don't let you know. I'm not touching you. <laughs> I'll touch you. <laughs> Uh, but they don't let you know that they're sleight of hand involved. They, ju they, they just think, you know, you just think they're tossing the cards around. They're good at right? it, too. Yeah, they're good, yeah. And then, king, king. Wow. Okay, so you're going to put all your money under here, <coughs> thinking that I just showed you two kings. So what are you doing, exposing the trick now? No, I'm not exposing the trick now. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's so but, that's <laughs> but but I'm just telling you, they're not. You know, it's a very, it's a modern day variation of the shell game with the shell and the and the uh, pea, right? So you that shell. Your hands? Yeah, I do, I do because I don't because I have a bad look. Look, get a close up on that. <laughs> yeah, I have to look at that all. <laughs> Friggin' night. <laughs> the blood, like, just, where'd you cut yourself shaving? I, I cut myself shaving. Yeah, all right, so don't brush it me to about on time. I, buy, I, have a, I have a nail biting problem, so, so I get mad. So do I. And also, like, when I'm doing close up magic, nobody wants to see my bloody. My bloody. And who are you, and how do we get a hold of you? Michael Healy, all right? MichaelHealyMagic.com or 973 477 2156. Right now, the phone number works better. Okay. Now, now that, that's not the only trick you know, right? No. Okay. <laughs> no, I've been doing magic for 40 years. Not the only trick. Quite a bit. That's it. Um,